Hello everyone and welcome to another video and welcome sadly to the onset of two big brick sessions this weekend for me. So Saturday the 27th of August I have four hours on the tri bike and two hours on my feet today and tomorrow I have four hours on the road bike and two hours on my feet but ultimately the good news is that this is the real top of the peak before we start to taper things down into a double Ironman distance extreme triathlon. So the good news is my training is about to become a little bit less antisocial as the volume tapers down. The bad news is that I'm actually going to have to get to the start line of this race and then give it my best shot, which is a difficult equation to balance when I'm thinking which is better and which is worse. But ultimately, I am quite looking forward to this training prep being over because there is a lot of my mental energy that is being spent on it. It's been very demanding. I've been quite open about how I've been feeling in previous videos. So if you're new to the channel, do go back and watch those for a bit more context and do make sure that you hit the subscribe button down below. And if you're new or old, please do hit the like button in terms of to the channel, not age. I don't, I'm not an ageist in any sense please do hit the like button so that I can understand what content you enjoy and which content you do not, as it is the best feedback mechanism for doing so. And if you enjoyed this video or any videos previously, please do share them with a friend, share them to your story, whatever love you have to give, please give it to me as I feel very deprived and very tired from all this training. Thank you very much. So we're gonna head out to the Scottish borders, which is south. I actually don't know if that is south, but it's backwards, so I'm gonna stick with it. Then head back here, so out and back, and then back here for some time on my feet. And we're gonna take you along for the ride. As we go, I'm gonna run you through some of the challenges that I've faced along the way with this prep and some of the challenges that I'm gonna face when it comes to race day. And ultimately just give you a summary of my thoughts at this stage. With a lot of training volume under my belt, big weekend of training to follow, and then a bit of psychological reflection as I need to visualize the race day, the strategy, and get everything nailed for what is gonna be around 36 to 42 hours of zone two or higher as fatigue sets in. But nonetheless, I think it's probably time that I clip into the bike and get a move on. Okay, so just over 60 kilometers down and two hours, 15 elapsed. So we've gone out to just shy of Peebles and now we're sitting in Inalithan, which is like the mountain biking hub of Scotland, to be fair. So coffee and cake on the way. And funnily enough, that's part of training. I've got to sit and get used to refueling, taking my time and then getting back on the bike and moving again because you can't do 360 kilometers at race pace as if you're racing a regular Ironman distance triathlon, so I need to get used to doing things in blocks. Good news is everything feels really, really solid. Heart rate's been about 135 to 140 the whole way, so all zone two. 
no discomfort, new position from Dougie at Edinburgh Bike Fitting feels creme de la creme, genuinely feels way better. Saddle sores are much better than they have been previously. So I'm gonna get some food in me here and then head back up the way that I came in. Okay, so as promised, I thought I'd reflect a little bit on where I'm at with this whole training process. If you've been watching the channel recently, you'll know that I've been finding it tough. It's been very, very time consuming amidst a very busy commercial period. Businesses are growing, which is obviously great, but with that comes increased demand on my bandwidth as an individual. And if I was to go back a few months and toss up the amount of hours I had available to do things during the week and had visibility on what it would look like alongside this training prep, would I have committed to this? Probably not, to be perfectly honest, but here we are. And in terms of what I've gained from it so far, it's forced me to be really, really strict with my time blocking, scheduling, planning ahead, where I've developed my skills and understanding of how best to do that for myself as an individual. It's forced me to prioritize from a business point of view. It's actually put me in a position where I haven't had a choice but to try and outsource a few things, which is good because it's almost given me the solutions to the problems that I was aware of, but didn't necessarily have the mental energy to find a solution for, if that makes sense. So out of necessity, I have found solutions and hopefully once this event is out of the way, will make my life easier on a day-to-day -day basis. So that's one thing. Second thing is it's allowed me to spend a lot of time out doing what I enjoy, which is training. However, the flip side of that is that it has been so, so time consuming because whilst the intensity is low, the volume is high. And as you can probably tell, I'm not really sending it today. I'm not tanking it. I'm not going for specific times. I'm not really fussed about how fast I'm even moving. I'm trying to move at my sort of race pace for the double, which will be around the 25 kilometer per hour mark. But other than that, it's just time in the saddle. And I have a confession to make. This shot here, jumping off the bridge, has slightly injured my foot. Injured in what way? We don't quite know, but I've taken a week or so off running. I had a running test last night, an hour at list pace to see how it felt. It felt okay whilst moving, but it was a little bit tender this morning when I woke up. So. I don't think it's a stress fracture because more pain would come from the impact, I'd assume, but I'm not ruling it out, but it is a bit sore today. So the two hours on my feet that I have planned after this are subject to feeling in my foot, that common phrase that we all use all the time, obviously. And if today doesn't allow me to run, tomorrow won't allow me to run, which means that I'll just ramp up the bike volume tomorrow to make up for that time in zone two that we're aiming to achieve this weekend. So. A bit of attention for the viewers, for myself, as we are riding back into the house at the moment, where we're going to find out whether I can actually run effectively. If I can't run, I probably just won't run again until the double and hope for the best, which is obviously the recommended tactic if you're preparing for something like this. But ultimately, it's going to be such a slog covering 84.4k after the swim and the bike already. What's a little bit more pain in my foot going to do, eh? I'm not going to be running it the whole way around. So I think as long as I'm conscious, I'm not going to do myself any damage that requires surgery, I'm still going to give it my best shot. So I think with that in mind, I'm going to roll off and head back to the house where I will catch up with you just before I head off for my uh, tentative run off the bike. Fingers crossed everything's fine. I just don't want to cause myself any more grief at this point because I'm fragile. This has been a lot of training volume and an injury maybe the straw that breaks this proverbial camel's back. So I'll give that to you. I'll uh, give that to my foot, which is down there. I hope nobody's offended by the uh, direct flipping of Le Bell. I don't know why it was French. So with that in mind, goodbye. Yeah. Job done, back at the house and lacing up to go and attempt a run. So data on the screen for you, just yeah, all felt good. Felt like I could have gone for ages. I feel like I've really nailed nutrition, hydration, coffee and cake stops, 
all part of the plan so feeling good main thing was as well we stopped a few times to speak to camera or for coffee and cake and whatever and i didn't get that oh my legs feel like lead feeling as we rode off which is always good because that's always a concern but if i'm being entirely honest just walking around the house not in cleats finding running stuff foot didn't feel great so i'm gonna give this a bash see how things feel and go from there. But I think it's probably worth mentioning at this point, the only thing worse than a potential injury at this point is these tan lines. They are now layered, which is, uh, yeah, not ideal really for, for anyone. I mean, visually it doesn't look great for me, it doesn't feel great. And I'm now gonna go and run in public. So I am going to catch up with you along the way as Campbell, the man behind the camera will be in a support vehicle and camera vehicle capacity but fingers crossed this goes okay at the end of the day if it doesn't it means that my run training is done which is good because i don't need to do any more running <laughs> and then the flip side of that is that obviously i don't want it to get any worse and i don't want to go into this compromised so you'll probably tell by the tone of my voice i'm a little bit hmm about this whole situation but for the sake of maintaining a reasonable demeanor on camera. I think I'm just gonna run away. Oh, some emotional control games going on there in the 14 minutes and 23 seconds that I've managed before deciding diminishing returns. Data on the screen for you just there. So as soon as I stepped out of the house, I sort of knew this is worse than it was yesterday when I ran that sort of easy 10, 12K, whatever it was. And with that in mind, I would like to save the okay feeling that I have for the double. So what I'm gonna do is what I do every, every time something goes wrong, which is try and divert to some form of neutral thinking, look at things for what they are. So it's not searing pain, which means it might not be a stress fracture. It might be but it's not agony, which means it's workable at the very least. I can't do anything about it between now and game day, which is exactly two weeks from today. This video will be coming out one week less than six days before kickoff. So realistically thinking about what things can be done in the meantime is rest it, really level up on the, on the bike, really level up on the, on the swim, and just accept that there's nothing I'm gonna be able to do for my running ability between now and then. Got a whole load of volume under my belt. I've got a whole load of his own two work with the bike, and I'm just gonna have to rely on that on the day. Yes, there's the counter argument that doing it and going through it on the day might do not damage, but it might make things worse. But given the calendar I've got, given the way it's feeling, I'm confident I can fight my way through 84.4k one way or another. And if it means a couple of weeks of not running afterwards, so be it at this point. I could easily catastrophize and think, oh, everything's falling apart. I've done all this for nothing, but that's not going to do me any favors. It's a lovely day. I've had a good bike ride. There's a lot of really good work done as part of this prep. It's not meant to be an easy event. It's meant to really push us. And I've been pushed to the point where I've got a niggle. The irony is, yes, that hasn't come from overworking or volume. It's come from jumping off a bridge for content. But the daredevil in me is saying, would I have been pleased with that swim had I not jumped off the bridge? And the answer is no, I don't think I would be. So we are where we are. I'm in the position that I am. I have some pretty miserable tan lines. I'm wearing the Gymshark Speed Range. If you'd like to shop it, then there is a link in the description for you to do so. And it really does help out the channel. Thank you very much. But where am I? Realistically, I'm kind of, this is a bit of a long rambly mess, but what I'm trying to say is, it is what it is for the time being. It's not great, but it's not awful, which means it's workable for the time being. It's one element out of three and it was always gonna be the worst one, so hey. A bad 84.4k is now slightly worse. Hardly the end of the world, is it? But what I'm going to do is try and get some sort of diagnosis assessment between now and race day so I kind of know how to approach it. Is it walking the whole thing? Is it running some of it? Is it avoiding running down hills? Is it wearing hyper cushion shoes? I don't know at this point. I'm kind of just going off the fact that this doesn't feel right. I know when to push through things and when not to. And right now this is not something to push through because it's gonna make things worse before it gets better. And ultimately all I want is a foot that can get me through the double brutal. So that's where we are. Bit of a flat finish to the video, but thought I'd be honest with you, it's not all sunshines and rainbows. It might be sunshine, but today there are no rainbows.
no rainbows, no rainbows. So we are where we are. I've been fortunate enough not really to have had an injury for a while other than my bike crash recently, which has left a scar, but didn't stop me from doing anything really, other than not looking like I've been beaten up by somebody walking through public places. But nonetheless, I digress, I digress. This is probably the longest outro I've ever done. Campbell, what are we at? Four. Four minutes. Four minutes of me not saying very much, but to summarize, I spent 15 minutes on the cusp of catastrophizing, as we tend to do as humans, but I've tried to divert to some sort of neutral thinking. I've been up and down along the way thinking, oh, it doesn't really matter to, oh, everything's gone wrong, you idiot. Why didn't you jump off that bridge? Why did you jump off that bridge? But here we are, two weeks out. Let's see what happens. That's it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. Uh, yeah.